All right, so that's the new thing I've been working on this week. And let me explain how I got here. Let's, let's just dive in and um, explain all the stuff that's happening here. Hey, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel and I'm working on Residual, which is probably my biggest game ever. It's gonna be extremely cool. Um, so that little sequence you just saw where we have this console and you push these things to it, then they rotate, connect and activate and a hologram pops out. That's been the, the most fun I had this week because it was a lot of fun coming up with the idea and then actually uh, seeing it happen. But let's just start at the beginning. Now that little sequence you just saw before the intro, um, it took a couple of elements and a lot of drawing and artwork and a great idea to make it happen. And it's always extremely fun that if you have an idea like that, the result matches the idea you originally had. So where did we start? Well, I started with drawing a background. I had all these little devices and things and gadgets, but they all look uh, very empty in this whole world, in this, this big world there was something missing. And then at some point the computer by accident generated one of these little devices and put some background art behind it. And it was uh, the obvious solution to my problem of making these things more interesting. I just need to create an interesting background to these devices so it doesn't get in the way of the player. It doesn't interfere with the level structure that's being created by the computer. And it also enhances these devices a lot more. So I'm using some blue shades for the background because um, first of all, I don't want too much color in the background. I don't want to interfere with the front and the, the player needs to know that everything in the back, it's not interesting, it's just there for eye candy. So these blue shades help me do that by just bringing it to the background, making it dark, make it's there, but you know it's, it's not really part of anything you're gonna do. It's just there to look good. I don't really go in with a plan on things like this. I just uh, start drawing and, and start filling up the screen and hope it eventually looks good and I might remove a bunch of stuff and then add new stuff and add details and eventually end up with something that hopefully looks good. I use a lot of techniques and tricks I already learned over the years to create certain type of details and shading and, and effects. So um, this is just a lot of experience at work here. There is no tutorial or anything. This is just uh, trying a lot of stuff and remembering what works in pixel art and then you can eventually do all this pretty quickly. Now the idea is that I just create one half of the background and then I'll flip it so it will be rendered twice on the screen, drawn twice on the screen, one on the left, one on the right, one will be flipped and mirrored of the other copy and then we have a pretty cool background which is the first phase of this whole sequence. And the second phase is of course drawing the little pillars. And the first thing I wanted to draw was this pillar that you can slide into, but then I figured it would be pretty cool to have it somehow lock into that console or into that device. So the top has to be able to rotate and move a little bit. So while I was working on this, my ideas and concept changed slightly, but the end result was very much worth the extra effort. So how the code looks is pretty simple. Um, item console is that little device, the, the key thing that you're gonna be interacting with. And this device itself has multiple images um, which make up the background, make up the console, and eventually uh, those little sliding pillars that you move towards that console. All right, so um, just back up a little bit. The console is one thing, but the pillars that are pushed are actually starting out as something completely different. I have an entity that you can push. It has all the code to interact with the player. If the player touches us, he can push us, drag us. All that code is there. We just need to have these pillars as part of that entity. So what we're gonna do first is create pushable pillar entities. And as soon as these are pushed against the console, they will vanish from the game world and the console will uh, magically show its own version of those pillars. So. It's a little trick that actually uh, removes something from the game world and then replaces it with something without the player ever noticing. And at that point, the console will take over these pillars and rotate the tops, connectors, and does all the magic. 
So when you're pushing one of these pillars around, you're actually pushing a pushable entity, which has all the code for pushing. And this includes uh, the rocks you can push around. A wasp nest is pushable. It's, it's all part of this code. It all runs the same code. All these entities, they look different, but they do the exact same thing. And the end result, as you saw, is uh, pretty cool. We also add some lights as soon as the connectors are attached. And then once both connectors are attached, we add a hologram and we're done. So it's still pretty cool to see this all in action and uh, it just took me about a day to have it all up and running from idea to fully working version. Um, most of that is it's this fast because I have a bunch of stuff already built into the game. So when I come up with new ideas, I'm first gonna see if I can actually um, hook it into existing code somewhere. Like these pillars have to be pushed. I already have something that can be pushed, which interact with the player being near, giving information to the player, hey, you can grab me, then uh, allowing the player to push it around, um, releasing it and then do other stuff with it. So having a bunch of stuff in a game is just, uh, very awesome because new ideas will be built on existing things that's that's very cool and it's gonna save me a lot of time now i just have to come up with interesting new ideas and build them now i've also been tinkering with our procedural creatures um talked about these in the last couple of videos and it's gonna be an ongoing topic because i'm still not done with them they are working they are up and running there's just a bunch of stuff that they should be doing and make them more interesting. One of those things is listening to trigger events. And pretty much everything in the game is now sending out trigger events from a fruit on a tree. It's gonna be triggering, hey, I'm here, I'm fruit, eat me. And the creature might actually respond to that trigger, go towards that food, eat it. And when it's eating, it will actually trigger an eat event. At that point, um, the fruit will disappear because it's noticing an eat event. So, hey, I'm out of here. And uh, other creatures might also be triggered by it and think, hey, there's some food there. I should be there as well. Or maybe I can eat whatever is eating something else. Trigger events are a lot of fun. Um, I'm comparing them to bullets in the game. Everything is shooting out these trigger events and everything is listening for specific trigger events. Now there were some things going wrong with these trigger events, so I wanted to uh, debug it, just check it, test it, but I can't hear or see the trigger event, so I needed to write a little bit of code that shows these trigger events to me. <laughs> Let me just show it to you. So here we have the game, and um, I can pop up this little console I wrote myself for the game, and it allows me to add and activate um, some debug code. Here we go. And then when we go into the game, we now see all these rectangles everywhere, which, uh, well, the player itself is also shooting a trigger, which is the orange thing. Then uh, we have all these little fruit items right here, also shooting little triggers. Um, the big white squares are actually part of the level design. So this is one level block. And um, we have a lot of these blocks making up a level. Let me just move to a little other part of the game. So this is the top world and let me make it a little bit sunnier. During the day, um, we have a bunch of triggers again, um, fruit, more vegetation. Let's see if we can find some creatures in this game world on this planet. Ah, here we have some life forms. As you can see, they're all triggering little things around them and they will respond to me being here as I'm a trigger of an entity and they are scared of entities. So just my trigger being here will push them away and have them jump around because they don't like me, which is very weird, but yeah. we have some other creatures right here, smaller creatures, all having trigger events. And we have a bunch more so we can also make a little fire event. Let's create a fire right here. And as you noticed, we now have a fire also triggering events. These are heat maps as well. So creatures that love the heat 
might be attracted by this, but most creatures will be uh, warned by the fire and get out of there. So the, so, so the main reason I've been adding these triggers is because I want everything on this planet to be able to interact with anything else on this planet. From uh, little flies to fire to big creatures to, to technology activating, switches being turned on or off, uh, doors opening and closing, everything is shooting out triggers and everything that's near it is the opportunity to respond to those triggers and as the player you're just one of the life forms on this planet you're not the main character this planet is the main character and everything happening on it is really the main character so that's why i've been working on getting all of this stuff up and running and the player is just one vehicle to move around everything on this planet and that's it for this week's video hope you enjoyed it i'm giving you a little bit more insight in the technical aspects of game development I have been trying to not do that on this channel too much. I don't want to go into code and talk about all the technical stuff, but I do want to give um, a little bit more insight into it because I know a lot of developers are watching this channel and I think the ratio developers to gamers is just a lot more developers and less gamers. So I'm gonna try and keep it non-technical for as much as possible and also show you pixel art creation and things like that. But there will be a little bit more code here and there because I just noticed that most of you like it a lot more to see what's happening behind it and behind the code and behind all the action and that's why i do this and of course if you have questions or whatever discord it's a fun place to hang out there's a lot of people and there's more people coming there so it's uh, starting to be very interesting and um that's it for this video hope you liked it subscribe if you haven't already like comment below and i'll see you next week every thursday new videos now I'll be going back into uh, game development mode. Bye!